welcome to um, another one of my PHP tools. Um, this tool will show you how to use a few of the um, MySQL functions. So first thing I'm going to do is start NetBeans and ZAMP. And today we'll actually need to start MySQL. Um, okay, so we've got MySQL on Apache started. Open up project of my first project. That loads up, that's good. Okay, so there's classes that we're doing last tutorial. Okay, um, right, so, um, first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to um, start a new, uh, um, we're going to need to create a new database. So if you go to localhost slash phpMyAdmin if you installed it correctly, phpMyAdmin. Uh, we're going to create a new database. So when you're on, when you're in PHP Admin, this is um, administrates our the MySQL server on your localhost, your computer. So you have got to make sure you have um, Apache and MySQL started for this to work. Um, so click on data databases, create database. Let's call it test for now. Create database exists. So I thought we deleted it. Make sure it's dropped. This is just database I already had. Can't delete database. Okay, um, make a new database. Call it test one. Create. This creates a database. So it should come up here. You wouldn't have as many of these uh, databases that I have, it's just because I've worked on quite a few things. So test one. Now I've got a new database. So let's create a table called um, users. So we had users for a um, a website. Um, okay, so what are we going to want to store about the users? Well, for now, we're only going to want to store, um, let's say, we'll store their email address, um, their email address, their password, and an ID, and their name. So, we're going to need to store an ID, because an ID will auto-increment, um, so it'll automatically add to it every row you add to the table. Um, that's so you can uniquely identify every single row. <coughs> so we're going to have four. So yeah, four. Um, four columns. When that's created, uh, so here we're just going to put an ID. Um, that you want to set this to serial. And mm, auto increment AI. That's what AI means. And primary index. Uh, now we're going to have an email address, which needs to be a var child, which is a string. Give it two five five for the maximum length. Um, password. Put that there. Make that varchar. We'll, we'll store it as a, a SHA password, um, which is encrypted. So we can't we uh, one way encryption, which means the password can't be decrypted. Best way of storing passwords. Um, and name. That need to be a varchar as well. Okay, so save that. We've now got a very simple database table called users. We can click um, structure. We can see the structure of the table. So we've got ID, which is um, a big integer. Um, it's, it will auto increment and it's the primary key. We've got email, password, and name. So, in here, uh, in our code, in NetBeans, we're going to need to connect to the database. So I'm going to rename functions to um, config. Now we change it to config.php. Strip out everything that's in here for now. So you might have seen config files before. Uh, this is going to require config.php. Delete all of that. So config. In config, we're going to have create some variables. So db um, user. That can equal root. This is the username db pass now because I'm on localhost and I haven't got a root password on my local server it's just blank so it's just an empty string uh, db uh, database equals um, test1 and db host so the server that we're looking at for well, the server that we want to connect to from MySQL, and that's going to be localhost because it's our computer. So now uh, we need to do MySQL connect 
MySQL underscore connect. Oh no, we need to store we need to store us in a variable. So um db con equals mysql underscore connect. So it tells us um the um the way we need to um call the function. So it asks for the server that we're trying to connect to, which is gonna be db host, the username and the password. So we do it like this. There we go. It's gonna be db host, comma, db user, comma, db pass. And we're then gonna go db um we're not we're gonna select db, so select the database. So MySQL select db is going to be um db database. So what we've done here is we have um <coughs> we have created some variables uh for the database information and we've then connected to the database and then selected the database we want to use. So we can um you can also do an if statement here um to make sure the database connected successfully. So we can go if dbcom so that means if the database connected successfully then I've moved the select db to inside the if statement else I want to die, I want to kill the script uh, strong, let's just html, error strong um, uh, could not connect to database which means if we can't connect to the database it's going to kill the script and print the error that cannot connect the database. But if we can connect, it's going to select the database to use. So we now have this page here is requiring config. So if I open up a new tab and go to local test server, my first project. So because nothing has been output, that means the script has not died, so it has successfully connected. So I can put in here print successfully connected to database. Uh, make it bold. So this is connected to the database. There we go. Um, so now I'll show you how to use some um, some MySQL commands. So let's say we would just want to select some data from the database. First of all, we're going to need to insert some rows into here. So. Um, Actually no, let's do it in the code. I'll show you how. So just let's just print um, do a br tag so there's a new line from successfully connecting. So inserting rows in, into database. Uh, can't spell. Um, okay. Um, dot dot dot. Okay, so to do a query in MySQL, you type MySQL underscore query, and then you type SQL code. So if I want to insert a row into the um, um, I thought I had tab up. Okay, if I want to insert, insert a row into the users table, I would um, type something along the lines of this: insert into uh, the back ticks are optional, but I just tend to use them for clarity. And you put back ticks around table names and columns. So insert into users. I think that's what I've called it. Yep, users. Insert into users, uh, and then we open up brackets for each. Uh, and in between here, we're going to have the columns that we're going to be inserting data into. Um, so insert into. We can. We don't need to um, insert into ID because that will automatically increment, automatically add a number to what the last ID was. So we're going to have email. We're going to have password, and we're going to have a uh, name. So I'm going to uh, then type insert into users email password name values, and then we open up brackets again. So my email, um, you need to open um, use uh, single quotes when inserting a string into MySQL. So my email is going to be eddie at em-creations.co.uk, comma, 
uh, password. Right, okay. Um, so say I wanted to encrypt my password, I would type some of this. So password equals test. Um, and then because I'm inserting a, str a PHP string, I need to do something like this. I need to um, get out of the string. Um, opening up these marks, I need to then concate what I'm going to put in between them with dots, and then I'm going to put in sha one password. So that will encrypt my password and put it in the insert string uh, query. So blah blah blah. Okay, and then I can move on uh, to put in my name. I'm just going to put in Eddie. Like that that should insert. Um, a new row into the user table with an email of eddie at emcreations.co.uk and an encrypted password uh, using SHA1 encryption of test and um, the name of eddie so if I just run the code first project, certain rows database and if I refresh here click on the table yep I've now got the, um, the row so id1 Email Eddie at emcreations at credit UK, password, that's the encrypted version of test for using SHA1 encryption, and name Eddie. Um, okay, so let's get rid of that. We've now inserted the row. Um, now we're going to do a query to get um, some information out of the database. So, um, first we start with the query. So I'm going to assign the result of a query to a variable called query. So query equals MySQL underscore query and we use select statement so select all uh, that's what the star means from users that will select everything from the users table um, if I then I then once I've got a query of all the users um, I then need to get the data out of each row and I use that using uh, a while loop. So open up while, um, and then I go um, row equals MySQL fetch a sock um, query. What this will do is it will loop through every row in the table that matches this, which will be everything because it select all from users, and there's no where clause either. Um, so that return the contents of the entire table and this while loop then loops through every row and assigns the contents of the row to the row variable so I can now print some data using the row variable so I can go print row um, name now because there's only one row in the table it should print Eddie because that's th what's um, in the name column. So the row mimics um, row mimics this row in the table basically. So well it's a representation of it. Um, so if I put row ID that would print one. If I put row email that would print ID email creations, blah blah blah. And if I pass it it would print that. Uh, but because I put name it should print Eddie. So if I refresh the page it's Eddie. There you go. Um, we'll just put a bit of um, spacing here. Okay, so if I then added another row, I'll put um, a sp space, um, a new line here as well. If I then just use a shortcut to insert and I click copy here, I can then change this to so Eddie. At, um, Donald at gmail.com. Um, Donald. It should now print Eddie and then Donald. There you go. Print names. Um, if I was to change the select query to select ID from users, that means I'm no longer selecting all the columns. So that should now print an error because net. Um, row name isn't available to us because we're not selecting everything. So, undefined index name. 
because name doesn't exist in that in the row array. So if I selected name instead, it should work again. There you go. Um, you can select more than one row, but not all rows, by separating it with a comma. So I can select name and ID. Went for an error. Um, so I can print more. So I can go row ID. And then do. Um, all I'm doing here is concating its strings together. So, row name. Now I'll print the ID and the name. There we go. But if we, um, and that's how it appears in the database as well. One, two, blah, blah. If I was to then print uh, row uh, email, we don't, we haven't selected email, so that shouldn't work. Undefined index email. Um, let's put a bit of space in here again. Uh, but now if I select email as well, it will work. There you go. So now, see, we're retrieving information from the database that's stored here. Um, yep. So that is just a very, very, very quick introduction to uh, using database functions in... Uh